Our scripture reading this morning comes to us from the Gospel according to John, the 13th chapter, beginning with the first verse. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments and, taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, If I do not wash your feet, you have no part of me. Then Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, The one who is bathed does not need to wash except his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not every one of you. For he knew who was to betray him. That was why he said, not all of you are clean. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garment and resumed his place, he said to them, do you understand what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, You also ought to wash one another's feet, for I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done for you. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart and our hearts upon the scripture be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. And the Oscar goes to, how many times did you hear those words last Sunday evening? Did you tune in to watch the Oscars? From what I understand, over 40 million people did tune in. They tuned in to watch the beautiful people walk across the red carpet. They tuned in to see the glitz and the glamour, the fashionable and the famous Imagine what it must be like to be the center of all of that attention. If you're not careful, it could go to your head. Do you remember the actor Tom Selleck? He was the star of a television show many years ago. The show was called Magnum P.I., and it was about a private investigator who lived and worked on the island of Hawaii. He had an experience which taught him not to let the fame get the best of him. He said, whenever I start to get a little full of myself, I remember the nice elderly couple who walked up to me with a camera on the street in Honolulu. When I struck a pose for them, the man said, no, no, we want you to take a picture of us. Tom Brokaw had a similar experience shortly after he was promoted to co-host the Today Show. He was wandering around Bloomingdale's and feeling pretty good about himself. The promotion was the latest in a distinguished career that took him from Nebraska to Los Angeles and then back to Washington, D.C. While he was in Bloomingdale's, he noticed a man was staring at him. Eventually, the man walked up to him and said, You're Tom Brokaw, right? That's right, Brokaw replied. You used to do the morning news on KMTV in Omaha, right? That's right, Brokaw replied, a little full of himself. The man said, I knew it the second I saw you. He then shook his head sadly and said, Whatever happened to you? (laughs) 
What we're talking about here, of course, is pride. And pride can be dangerous. If you're not careful, it can get you into all kinds of trouble. Just look at Peter and all the other disciples. Let me ask you this question. After Jesus washed Peter's feet and the feet of all the other disciples, how come none of them washed his feet? Jesus was their teacher and Lord, and you would think that they would wash his feet, but there's nothing in John's gospel that indicates that they did that. That would have been pretty significant. So the fact that John doesn't mention it leads us to conclude that it didn't happen. They didn't wash his feet. My guess is they didn't wash his feet because their pride got the best of them. You see, back then, washing someone's feet was something that a lowly servant was supposed to do. Richard Toe is a mediator and a former pastor, and he has a very interesting perspective on what might have happened that night. As the disciples walk into the upper room, they see a towel and a basin of water over in the corner, but they don't see any servant to wash their feet. So as they're sitting at the table, they begin to wonder. They're a little embarrassed. Someone at least should go over to Jesus and wash his feet. Thomas is thinking to himself, I'd do it, but that would put me on the bottom of the heap, and they'd expect me to do it from now on. James is uh, thinking, I did it last time. Let Matthew do it. He hasn't done it for a long time. Meanwhile, down at the other end of the table, Thaddeus is grumbling to himself. Jesus told John and Peter to make all of the arrangements for the Passover. Let them do it. John, however, was the beloved disciple, the disciple whom Jesus loved. So there was no way he was going to do it. And Peter... He wasn't about to wash any stinky, smelly feet, even if they did belong to the Messiah. Besides, Peter is thinking, Jesus said, I am the rock, and upon this rock, he's going to build his church. So, obviously, Jesus thinks I'm a very important person. If all of these other flunkies understood that, they'd be over here washing his feet and mine. No one wash the feet of God's only begotten son on that sacred night because their pride got in the way. Jesus didn't have that problem. In just a few hours, he was going to be arrested, beaten, and crucified. But it didn't stop him from kneeling down and washing the disciples' feet. It didn't stop him from showing the disciples how much he really loved them. In her poem, God in an apron, Macrina Whitaker captures the wonder of that grace-filled moment in the upper room. Her poem goes like this. Supper was special that night. There was both a heaviness and a holiness hanging in the air. We couldn't explain the mood. It was sorrowful, yet sacred. Gathered around that table, sharing in that meal, seemed to us the most important meal we had ever sat down to eat. We were dwelling in the heart of the mystery. Though dark the night, hope felt right, as if something evil was about to be defeated. And then suddenly, the one we loved surprised us all, He got up from the table and put an apron on. Can you imagine how we felt? God in an apron. Tenderness surrounded us as he bowed before us. He knelt and said, I choose to wash your feet because I love you. God in an apron, kneeling. I was embarrassed until his eyes met mine. I sensed my worth then. He touched my feet. 
He held them in his strong brown hands. He washed them. I can still feel the water. I can still feel the touch of his hands. I can still see the look in his eyes. Then he handed the towel to me and said, As I have done, so must you do. Learn to bow. Learn to kneel. Let your tenderness encircle everyone you meet. Wash their feet, not because you have to, but because you want to. It seems I've stood 2,000 years with that towel in my hand. As I've done for you, so you must do, keeps echoing in my heart. There are so many feet to wash, I keep saying. No, I hear God's voice resounding through the years. There are only my feet. As you do for them, you do for me. Jesus didn't let pride keep him from washing the disciples' feet that night. He didn't let pride keep him from showing them how much he loved them. Jesus didn't let pride keep him from loving the forgotten, the forsaken, the unforgiven, and all of the other people nobody else wanted to love. And Jesus is calling to you and me from that upper room, and the message is simple. Don't let pride bottle up the God-given love in your heart. Don't let pride keep you from loving someone enough to say, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hurt you. Don't let pride keep you from loving someone enough to say, I forgive you, even when that person doesn't ask to be forgiven. Don't let pride keep you from loving the person who pushes your button, from loving the person who is a crack addict and can't help herself, from loving the person who is homeless and has no one to blame for his misfortune but himself. And... Don't forget the other side of the coin. Don't let pride keep you from letting someone else wash your feet. Don't let pride keep you from letting someone else help you. There's a story that is told about Booker T. Washington. Booker T. Washington was an African-American educator who helped found Tuskegee Institute which later became Tuskegee University, back in 1881. He was the first president of the university. One day he was walking through a well-to-do section of town when a wealthy white woman came up to him and asked him if he wanted to earn a few more dollars by chopping some wood for her. Washington didn't have any pressing business at hand, so he rolled up his sleeves and started chopping the wood. He even carried the wood into her house and stacked it beside the fireplace. As he was doing that, a child saw him and later told the wealthy woman who he was. She was horrified. The next day, she went to see Booker T. Washington in his office at the school. After she profused After she apologized profusely, he did his best to reassure her. Madam, he said, it's perfectly all right. Occasionally, I enjoy a little manual labor. Besides, it's always a delight to do something for a friend. The disciples didn't wash the feet of God's only begotten son that night. But you can. And I promise you this. When you bow down to do that, it will lift you up until you feel incredibly blessed. You know, maybe they should make that an award next year. The Oscar for foot washing goes to maybe you. Amen.